Hi everybody, it's Sandy and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to show you something a little different. We're going to mix some skin tones with watercolor markers. A lot of the different sets of markers don't have actual skin tones and people are always wondering how you do that. So I'm going to use this Birdie Brown design from My Favorite Things and I'm going to start by just doing some practice. This is cold practice. I was just trying this, guessing what colors were going to work and we're going to mix well because I only have 12 colors in my clean color pens collection so far because I have to go buy all the other colors now because I like these and I'll link you at the end of this to another video on the clean color pens but I'm starting with some yellow color and some brown color to see what happens when I mix them. I'm just going to put some water on this, just plain clean water and I'm going to try to see if I can mix a Caucasian skin tone and bear with me as I do all of these because they're going to look like a hot mess until they start looking awesome. So that is typical for a lot of my stuff. I'm doing a lot of layering the same way I do with my Copic markers, but I'm going to do layering with watercolor instead right on the watercolor paper. So I'm working on Canson paper with clean color pens from Zig. And all the supplies will be in the description down below. So. I dabbed off some of that color and all of a sudden I was left with a flesh tone underneath and so those colors worked pretty well together. So here I'm going to try the yellow and orange and, and mix those two colors and I'm also going to add in a few other things just to see what happens. When I use Copics I put purples in there, blue violet types of colors and I'm going to see what happens when we do that. Add some more water to it just like I did last time and pull that color in from the edges not really worried about where the light's coming from and all that. I put a little extra shadow underneath of her hat because there would be some shadow there. And this one's coming out much more yellow, partially because I probably used a little more yellow ink potentially than I did last time or a lot of different factors could cause that. But I'm just going to dab that off and it got really pale. So now I'll add some purple back in and leave more of it around the edges and then dra drag just a little bit across the whole thing so she gets a little more of a natural skin tone across there. And whatever markers you're using, play with them like this. Stamp like a whole bunch of faces in a corner and then just try a whole bunch of different things. Write down what you did so that you can do it again next time. So she had lost so much yellow that I decided to add a little more yellow in and it came out pretty natural looking when I was all done. So and then I wanted to try an African American little girl to see how that would work because a lot of times you can end up with a big brown blob and I didn't want her to look like a big brown blob. So I'm putting a lot of the brown color in there first and yes, it, it's gonna look like not even a big brown blob. It's just gonna look like a big, big hot mess at first here. But again, bear with me because now that I get the color mixed on there really well, I'm gonna add this, this blue color, this dark blue color. And that's gonna add my deep dark shadows. And I know it looks a little funky right now, but as you start to mix this in, it starts to turn the other colors a little darker. You can add more brown on top of it to turn it back into more of a traditional brown color for that African American skin tone. But you can see I'm just playing around with it to see what different colors are going to do. So on this finished one for my card, I decided and to speed it up, of course, first because you've already seen my technique now and I'm gonna make her more of a Latina. So I did some yellow and orange and I added some brown. And now I'm gonna go in with my water and just start spreading that color around and then trying to figure out what I need to add to change it, to make it a little different and make it, you know, give her a little more natural color because she is looking a little on the yellow side. So I added some light blue this time just to see what it would do. And it did go a little green. So I added more brown to kind of warm that back up again. And after I did, did the dab off, look, it came out just adorable. I love the way the skin tone came out, but I never would have thought that that cobalt blue color was gonna do that. So practice with your markers and see which different colors are gonna mix and layer to do what. And make sure you write down what you did when you're successful so that you can repeat it. So here I'm gonna make her a yellow and red dress and you can, with these markers, you can actually blend them right on the paper without even using any water. But I did decide to go in and use some water for it. 
I'm going to color her hair black, but plain black hair is boring to me. So I'm going to do what I always do, which is add some blue or purple to it. So I'm doing black on top of the blue and then I'll mix it with a little bit of water to blend those two colors together. And then she'll have a little more interesting hair rather than just a solid black. Sometimes you can use gray highlights to, uh, to work on black hair, but I find that a color is just a little more friendly of an image. And this is gonna be so bright because these clean color markers are just crazy bright. So I wanted to make sure that her hair was just as bright and happy. So I'm gonna give her a hat that's going to match her little blouse. So I'm doing the red and the yellow again, not using any water this time, just blending them the way that the two blend together. And with these markers, they're not gonna ruin the tips of each other. I can just scribble it off on the side and my pen will return to normal. And now I'm gonna do the background while that dries. So first I wanna mask off using this incredible nib thing. And it's basically a wooden pencil that has a chisel nib on one side and a pen nib on the other. And I can just paint all this on there to mask off the areas that I don't wanna get any color on when I watercolor the background. So now while that dries, I'll go and, and uh, trim out my image because it's easier to trim out an image when it's not wet because the paper isn't soggy and kind of floppy. So I waited for that to dry while I did another task. It's one of those multitasking things that we do as crafters. And she's pretty easy to cut out. She doesn't have a whole lot of super fussy areas and I'm not cutting out the areas in between her ponytail and her head and her neck and that kind of thing. So now you can see all of that stuff is on there and it's dried. And I can just draw in with one of the clean color pens a couple clouds. And I'm gonna also color a little bit of green along the bottom. And I don't show it here, but I do put a little line of blue sky at the bottom of the flowers. So I can make a little, little bit of blue at the base of the sky as well. And then I can just add water. On this bottom part, there's nothing masked off, so I can just add the grass and then turn it upside down because I want the point of the brush facing the direction where I want the hard edge. The hard edge is gonna be that top of the cloud and it'll, that's what's gonna give it that cloud shape. So then I'll have another cloud up here at the top and all that masking is protecting my sun and my butterflies and everything. So a few finishing touches on the bottom, get it good and off camera for you and then find out that I'm off camera so I moved it back up, sorry about that. And now I'm gonna use a rubber cement pickup to remove this. You have to be really careful because the surface of watercolor paper is delicate and you wanna make sure you wait till everything is completely dry because you could pull off the surface of the paper and you wanna just do it really, really carefully after it's dry. And don't ever use the masking fluid on top of anything wet either. So all is left to do is to fill in my butterflies. I could get fancy with them and with this one, I decided to do a couple tones of different colors and blend them together. But with all the other stuff going on in this card, it would be totally fine if everything in the background was flat. I did decide to pop the center of the sun. So I stamped another sun and did a two color blend on it in the orange and yellow. And now she's popped on some little slivers of power tab. So her legs will stand up. And there she is on her happy little card. And I think it just came out so cute and bright. I added two layers, some red and some yellow, just to tie all that color together and put it on a nice sharp black card base. And that's gonna pull the color in from her hair and really draw attention to her because it's got that heavy black layer to set it all off. So there you go. Here are two more videos if you're interested. More clean color markers on the left if you wanna know more about that product. And on the right is one of many of my Copic videos that shows coloring the skin shadows with a little bit of purple. So I hope you enjoy those or anything else you do today. Leave me a comment and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.